Hello and welcome. Today we are working on a related rates problem and we've got a lot of moving pieces so let's get started. We have a kite that is 100 feet above the ground and it moves horizontally at a speed of 8 feet per second. We want to know what rate is the angle between the string and the horizontal decreasing when 150 feet of string have been let out? That's a lot to digest and I've already gone ahead to draw this diagram which involves only the things that we know so far. So to be particular, we have a height of 100 feet. I've drawn this triangle here. We know that this 100 feet is constant and we know that we are moving to the right, expressed right here, at a rate of eight feet per second. I've called that dx dt. We want to know what is d theta dt, expressed, which I've expressed with uh, this theta right here. We want to know what d theta dt is when s of t is 150 feet. I've gone ahead and written our two side lengths, x and s of t, as I've written these as functions of time because we do know that the kite is moving, so we know that the string length and the horizontal distance, we know those will be changing with time. When we're working on related rates problems, we want to associate variables that we care about with facts kind of from the design of the problem. And what I mean by that is, for instance, here we have a triangle. So if we want to relate theta to things that we know, we might start by using our trig identities because we're working with a triangle. I might start with the sine of theta is equal to our uh, height of the triangle on the opposite side. The height is 100 feet. And our hypotenuse is s of t, the length of our string. And since we're interested in the rate of change of this angle theta, I'm going to differentiate this on both sides with respect to theta. The derivative of sine is just cosine. And from the chain rule, we have a factor of d theta dt. And then on the right hand side, we have a constant, 100 feet. That's going to be multiplied by negative 1 over s of t squared. That comes from the power rule. And then we are also going to have a factor of ds dt once again from the chain rule. The good news is that we have uh, we have d theta dt in here, which is what we're looking for. The bad news is we've got a ds dt, which we don't know yet. So we're going to have to solve for that. I'm going to go about that by using Pythagoras' theorem. I'm going to relate the sides of this triangle by writing down s of t, the length of our string, is equal to the height of our triangle, 100 feet. This value squared plus x of t also squared. And once again, I am interested in our rate of change, so I'm going to differentiate this on both sides with respect to time. On the left-hand side, I'm going to have a 2 times s of t times ds dt. On the right-hand side, this coefficient, 100 feet squared, this is going to not be changing, so it won't appear in our derivative. And the derivative of x of t is squared, just like on the left-hand side, we're going to see 2 times x of t times dx dt. Once again, this dx dt comes from the chain rule. We're going to go ahead and solve for ds dt. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have x of t one moment, we're going to have x of t divided by s of t multiplied by dx dt. Those of you who are good with your trig, you'll notice almost right away that our x of t is our adjacent to the theta that we're interested in, and s of t is our hypotenuse. So if we're paying attention, we'll notice that x of t divided by s of t, this is actually cosine of theta. So I'm going to rewrite that. You'll also notice that dx dt is something we already know. This is the horizontal movement of the kite, which we know is 8 feet per second. And so because of that, we have an expression for ds dt that fits really nicely with the original equation that we had. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this down below. Give me one second while I do that. And we're going to go ahead and substitute this new piece of information that we know. I'm going to get rid of these twos that came down. It looks like if we plug in ds dt, we'll have cosine of theta times d theta d, here, let's write a better theta, d theta dt, it's not great, but we'll work with it, feet times negative 1 over s of t squared times cosine of theta. Now we're plugging in ds dt, 
times 8 feet per second. Now, I know we've got a lot of pieces here, but this actually simplifies quite nicely. We have a cosine on both sides of the equation. We know S of t is 150 feet at the point we care about. So we're going to go ahead and simplify. We have d theta dt equals 100 divided by 150 squared is 100 over 225 with two zero. So that's going to be negative 1 over 225. You don't have to write that correctly. We have 1 over 225 feet times uh, 8 feet per second. And this, uh, so our final expression for d theta dt is a relatively a nice looking negative 8 over 225 radians per second. The radians, uh, radians is a funky unit because it's not really a length, it's kind of a unit of nothingness. But at the end of the day, we have an expression, our rate of change, that angle is decreasing at a rate of 5 over 225 radians per second. Mm -hmm.